Does big numbers make you happy? Well, it does for me. And that is exactly what Spadodia specializes in. Big, bursty numbers. As currently one of the best boss killer, Spadodia's ultimate has a 700% multiplier with up to 80% bonus critical damage at P0, bringing the highest burst damage we have in game at low portraits. With that being said, having the right teammate can make a huge difference for her, more so than others due to her synergy with Precognition and Burning. In this video, we'll go over her kit with a deep look on Precast and Burning. We will also of course go over her build, along with the best team, including in the future patches. Now let's get started. Spadodia's insight is quite simple. Her inside one gives her a 25% crit rate on the next attack whenever her attack causes burning to the enemy. And her inside three applies burning to enemy whenever she lands a crit. Such a simple yet coherent insight gives her almost a permanent 25% crit boost as long as she keeps critting. Her skill 1 is a single target skill and is stronger than what we usually have. On the other hand, her skill 2 is a buff card with no damage. It will apply 2 to 5 stacks of exhilaration, 3 to 9 stack of pre-ignition, and pre-cast ignition point to her. Pre-ignition will be converted to equal amount of burning onto the enemy after the attack, and it also unlocks her skill 1's bonus crit damage. Because of the two buffs, this skill is the easiest way to trigger Spadodia's signature psyche cube, Long Night Talk's 8% damage bonus. Though also because pre-ignition conversion happens after the attack, the burning from it won't help with Blasphemer of the Night. The final effect of her buff card is Precast. Precast is a new effect added with Spadodia. After casting her buff card, she will print a skill 1 card of the equivalent rank next turn. You can only have one per cast of the card at a time, and the rank will be determined by the last skill 2 that was used. The precast will also only last one turn unless it's consumed, either through using it directly or fusing. Now you may ask, a buff card on a DPS that does no damage, shouldn't this be a bad thing? Well, there are a few things about precast that make the skill good enough. First, the precast card is considered outside of the incantation on hand. Not only does it break the card limit, it also won't change when you refresh the deck. This allows you to easily have access to two skill one cards whenever you want to happen. And if you have watched my previous video about fusing, you know now you can reliably gain three mocks into actions by fusing this card with the regular skill one on hand. With proper handling, you will have access to her ultimate on turn three with only four moves, and every other turn after that. And if you have no other use of the actions, you can even give Spathodia 5 actions without the fusing in the first 3 turns without the need to rely on RNG. Overall, this gives her a very reliable rotation with faster ultimate cycling. And her ultimate is quite loaded. Spathodia's ultimate has a base of 700% multiplier plus 40% crit damage bonus with additional 40% against enemy with at least 15 stacks of burns. And while I didn't mention here, the pre-ignition stack will also count it toward the calculation despite the burn conversion happening after the attack. With 80% bonus critical damage, this is one of the strongest single target ultimate at P0. Unfortunately, part of its damage is locked behind the 15 stack of burns, and burning, after dealing damage based on its stack, will keep only half of its stack at the end of the turn rounded down, making the 15 burn stack fairly difficult to get by herself. You can try to stack her pre-ignition, but it's usually not worth the effort consider how much damage you will be losing from not using her attack, plus the additional turn that will be required to actually get her ultimate up. The only way to salvage this is through support. As of 1.7, the game has two burn focus units. The first come with Spithodia in 1.5, which is Wulu. Wulu is a generalist support who can passively apply 3 burn to enemy each turn and also apply burn with her skill too. Her ultimate provides 3 rounds of 15% damage dealt buff, increased to 20% MP5, and also 15% damage reduction to the team, with the damage dealt effect doubled when enemy have at least 15 burns in total. Unfortunately, with her ultimate being the only true support skill, the damage bonus she provides is not competitive against Necrologist. And character like Kornbloom or Shaman can provide better buff coverage for less actions. This does not mean she's completely useless though. The bonus crit damage on Spadodia's ultimate goes up to 70% at P3 and 100% at P5, 
and just like the base crit damage bonus, the power that is locked behind 15 burns also goes up to 70% and 100% respectively, making Wulu a viable support for high portrait Spadodia. That is, until Isolde release in 1.7. Isolde is the first support that have no defensive utility and still gets to be placed at tier 0. She passively applies 3 burning to all enemies and also 3 pre-ignition to all allies each turn. You can easily save up the pre-ignition onto your supports and unload them before Spadodia out, making the bonus critical damage much easier to achieve. After finish warming up her finale, Asode also passively gives her team a 1 use 25% damage bonus each turn with an additional 1 use 50% damage bonus from her ultimate. She can make Spadodia burst like no one else can. In my honest opinion, it's probably not worth building Wulu for Spadodia unless your Spadodia is P3 and above, while you also have excessive amount of material landing around. But regardless of the portrait, her ultimate bonus critical damage will be easily unlocked with Asode on her team. For her side cube, her signature side cube comes first. It has very high base attack value with its passive providing even more attack whenever she uses her buffing skill. Unfortunately, it provides incantation might instead of ultimate might, otherwise it could have been even better. You can also consider Luxurious Leisure. It's quite easy to stack with her and will provide decent amount of ultimate might. In fact, a max amplified Luxurious Leisure is going to outperform Long Night Talk with no amplification. Though, of course, Long Night Talk still have the better edge on equal amplifications. So, make your decision based on how many Kulani you have later on and what you have already amplified. What about that there's plus? Her skill are all single target and she can crit! As for resonance, crit is definitely the way to go, but because of the bonus crit rate at P2 and above, you can switch out some crit pieces for more attack or damage bonus, which will give her a damage boost. Here is the general portrait improvement, assuming different resonance at P2 and above. Calculated by Amika Gilflame from NGA. For her team, Tooth Fairy will be the definitive support since her passively applied debuff is perfect for Spadodia, providing her with both more stable crit plus bonus critical damage. If you don't have her, Medicine Pocket is still a viable option since Medpock can provide damage bonus with her skill 1. Spadodia have almost all her power budget thrown into crit and her psycho focuses on attack, so damage bonus from support provide much higher boost to her than most of the characters we have had so far. For the other support spot in 3-man team, you can use Shemaine, Kornblum, or even Tenet as the damage booster at the moment. Both Shemaine and Kornblum have defensive shred plus damage taken increase will also provide some extra AoE damage, which Spadodia is lacking in. And Tenet, while not the most ideal, can provide a good amount of defense shred with her diamond bullet to a single target. Of course, if you got that P3 Spadodia, you could throw Wulu on here as well, if you can synchronize Wulu's damage bonus from her ultimate with Spadodia Salmon on a target with 15 burn, then you will get some of the highest damage you can get at the moment. At 1.6, Gutian will take over as the best in slot support for her with both defense reduction and 40% damage bonus, and at 1.7, Asode will take over as the support for Spadodia with her extremely aggressive burning application, insane amount of AoE damage, not to mention the pre-ignition which helps Spadodia deal more damage on skill 1 without her buff card. For 4 man team, you can throw on either Necrologist or Pickle for their damage bonus, or 6 for general utility depending on the content. But my favorite has to be Spadodia, Isolde, Tooth Fairy, and either Katian or Necrologist. The insane amount of damage bonus you can load onto Spadodia with the setup, especially with the help of some additional environmental bonus, allows Spadodia to deal over 100,000 damage with her ultimate. At P0. And that's pretty much all you need to know. Also, there are a few rotations you can run with her, depending on your preference and situations, and I will go over them in a separate video this time. This has been Steam by Next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.